Hi guys. Sick cowboy boots. Morning. You guys see these boots? Uh, okay, so let's just start with what do we have in front of us here. What's this guy? This is called um, Amazon Tap. It's a Bluetooth um, Wi-Fi speaker. Has two stereo speakers on each side. Um, battery life, play battery life of about nine hours when it's out of the dock and uh, standby time of up to three weeks. And, it's, and it does the same thing that Echo does, uh, with, it, with one exception. It's called tap because you tap the microphone button, and then, and then you speak to the Alexa uh, voice service in the cloud. It can't always be listening because it's battery powered, so that doesn't really make a Correct. lot of sense. So if we say like, Alexa, who are you? I'm Alexa and I'm designed around your voice. I can provide information music, news, weather, and more. It's <laughs> like a genius. Um, so I want to start with, like, obviously people have been super excited about this. We had a bunch of hands go up when I asked how many people yeah, have the Echo. Guys. And it's a new device, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, and I know that Amazon's pretty tight about what it shares in terms of hardware numbers. I'm not going to ask you about specific sales, but I will ask, are we, are we outpacing the Kindle, perhaps, with this device? Is this going to be the best-selling hardware device out of Amazon, this, we're, this suite well, of products? We're, we're clearly excited about Kindle. We're excited about Fire TV. Um, right. What I can tell you is that uh, if you look at Echo, Echo Dot, and Tap, you, you, can, you can get a sense for how it's, how it's selling and how well it's doing by the, by the reviews. Echo itself has over, what, 36,000 reviews right now, Four, you know, 4.5 rating. And I think a third of the reviews uh, reference the word love. I mean, people, it's really resonating with the customer base. So I'll reframe the question then. In its first year, how many reviews did the Kindle have? You know, I don't know. I okay. Don't so the, we're just not going to get an answer on that one. But that's OK. Um, I read this, this story that said that the Echo actually started as an AR product that was going to, like, you know, throw stuff up onto the wall as information? Is that just malarkey or uh, did? I, I've never heard that. You've never heard of I, that? I personally have never heard that, no. OK. No. That's good, though, because <laughs> can you imagine this as AR? That would be a <laughs> mess. Um, my, my grandma is like 80, and she loves this, this whole idea. She doesn't have yeah. Wi-Fi in her home, but she really wants an Echo, and I keep telling her, like, you got to get internet if you're going to be able to use this. But there's such a breadth of people that yeah. are interested in this product. And I, I just, I'm curious, because we've had, we've had AI and we've had this voice-powered assistant whole idea for a while now, Siri, Google Now, et cetera. Why, why is this exciting so many people? Um, I, my, my take, and this is both from personal experience with the product and with what, what we hear from customers, is it's, it's largely about the far field voice capability, the fact that the Echo sits in your home, wherever you choose to put it. It has these seven microphones that are, that are listening. Um, and they're waiting, they're doing what's called keyword spotting. They're waiting for a wake word. And in this particular case, they're waiting for Alexa. And when they hear Alexa, they, you know, Alexa wakes up and begins streaming what, you, what you're saying to the cloud-based service, the Alexa voice service. And then while that's happening, it's trying to, it's doing a lot of technical things that you don't feel. Right? It's, it's uh, taking that audio, it's breaking it into text reliably, it's then inspecting that text. And um, our NLU service then looks at the text and says, what's your intention? What would you like us to do? And then, and then let's say you say, what's the weather? It hands it off to a service that is going to tell you the weather. The weather comes back through a text-to-speech engine, and then it speaks that all back to you. And all that happens in about uh, one to two seconds. And I think the fact that you've taken something that historically you would have to pull out a computer to do or your phone or a, or a tablet and you've removed all of that mechanical stuff and you've just let people use one of the more natural interfaces they have, their voice, from up to 25 feet away and just say, what's the weather? Yeah. So I think it's that, that, that simplification of things that um, you have had to do historically uh, that people are really ex excited about. And I think it also has to do with the fact that it's in the home, right? Because like <clears throat> when, when Siri first came out, the idea of pulling out your phone and talking to it was cool in theory, mm -hmm. but I don't think a lot of people were comfortable in public talking right. to their phone, right? right? But when you're at home and you're alone, I think it makes a lot more sense to start talking 
um, to AI, and I think it's going to have yeah. a lasting effect. But you guys are kind of building some portability into this stuff. So as we see with this mm -hmm. device, you can take this anywhere. And then there's also um, you know third-party services that can integrate it. You were just playing right. with, a, with an app back there that has Alexa right. built into it. Um, can we talk a little bit about like Alexa as a platform and how you see that growing and, and what Absolutely. that means? Absolutely. It's actually one of the most exciting things that, that we did. We launched, I think it was last June, we opened up two SDKs, one called the Alexa Skills Kit. And frankly, some of the folks here at the Hackathon used it. We were real excited, by the way. Thank you. The winner, um, actually. The winner, the winner was an Alexa-based project, and I think 19 or 20 uh, projects were here, and seven of them won some form of an award. But um, we opened up the Alexa voice service um, with two SDKs, the Alexa Skills Kit. That lets people who have existing apps or services voice enable those services without having to understand ASR, NLU, deep learning techniques, neural networking. Um, we just try to make it easy for them to take apps which historically required some form of physical input and interaction and just voice enable them. The other SDK that we launched was called the um, Alexa voice service. And this is, this is for largely for people who have applications, services, or hardware. And the hardware could be, you know, consumer electronics, TVs, whatever, appliances, automobiles, and take that entire Alexa voice experience and embed it in their own equipment or apps. So I guess in talking about the portability or Alexa as a platform, I'm curious if this in some way makes up for what was the Fire Phone. Right, because Amazon did want that personal relationship with a user the same way that they interact with their smartphone. That's the most intimate device that we have. And the Fire Phone didn't really work out, so you know, whatever. But Alexa built into apps and coming into your phone, going with you in your bag like this, would you say that that kind of is a replacement for what I, the Fire Phone could have I, been? I don't, I don't see it that way. I think we've, we've, um, we've had a history of invention at Amazon some things are going to work real well, some things are not going to work. I mean, we were working on these products simultaneously. And so with the tablets, if starting with e-ink, then the tablets, then the Fire TV, Fire Phone, frankly, we learned a lot from Fire Phone. Um, and now Alexa, uh, we have things to be excited about the whole portfolio, but Alexa clearly has, has uh, resonated with customers and frankly, developers equally. Uh, and speaking of developers, you know, there, Amazon has gone to great lengths to explain the privacy um, situation with Alexa, which I think is great. Um, the, the, the idea is that it's not listening or recording anything you're saying until it hears the word Alexa, right. at, at wh which point it starts to take that data. Um, but as more third-party developers start getting their hands on these SDKs and APIs, what extra safeguards are in place to ensure that when I'm talking to my you know, mom on the phone and when I'm at home, that that data isn't being you know, either sent back to Amazon or to a third party the, developer? Uh, I mean, the reality is the, uh, we, we had to, s from the beginning, um, we thought about security with the device. I mean, we have a 20 year history of, of trying to build trust with our customers and hopefully we've, we've done a decent job with that. So from the beginning when they were designing Alexa, when we were designing Alexa, we had to make sure that we gave you um, a way, ultimately if you wanted, to just hit a mute button. And the mute button would actually remove power from the microphone. So if you really were concerned um, at a particular moment in time, you could hit the mute button. But beyond that, um, as you speak, we are, in fact, only waking that device up in terms of sending anything to the cloud when you see that little blue light ring that goes on. In the case of Amazon Tap, the only time something goes to the cloud is when you touch that tap button. So you have a great, you have visual indicators, audible indicators, uh, a mechanism to turn the power off to the to the microphones, and then if you if you want to see what you have said to Alexa that was stored in the cloud, we save the utterances uh, your utterances to your Amazon account. You can see them, you can delete them individually, you can delete them selectively. That's what Amazon does. Like for mm -hmm. example, on Android, like the, the top ten flashlight apps are malware, right? So what's to stop a developer from putting a malicious bug? Into the into this and and pulling that without I, any I, of those I, visual indicators. You know, I, I I would just say that our our SDKs, our APIs that we have, are secure. Um, if someone if some developer chooses to do something in their code, I you know I I have limited control over that. But what I do have control over is what happens when you're speaking with Alexa. Okay. Um, what is the most common query? 
What is the most common query? I think there are um, a number of things that are happening with Alexa. We watch, of course, what's happening all the time, and uh, music is very popular. Right? Well, uh, it, was, it was actually one of the most obvious use cases. We were selling a speaker. The speaker was Wi-Fi connected and Bluetooth, and, and it was connected to your Amazon account, so people would say, uh, uh, play share. <laughs> uh, for instance, we were talking about favorite musicians. I could turn back time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's very simple. You don't have to be near the device. You just, you're in your living room, you're in your bedroom, you're wherever you are, and you say, play share. Alexa, play share. And all of a sudden, um, Alexa, the voice service, looks in your Amazon account. Have you purchased share before? If so, we'll play it from your library. If you haven't purchased share before and you're a Prime member, it looks in your, uh, the Prime music library, and we have over a million free. Uh, MP3s. If you're a, a Pandora, Spotify, iHeartRadio, etc. Uh, customer and you bound your account to us, you can say it explicitly. You can say, play share from Pandora, and it will even say to you, um, I'm sorry, but I don't see a share station in, your, in Pandora. Would you like me to create one? Right. And you say yes, and it creates one. So I think that's one of the big use cases. Another use case that we see that's extremely interesting, um, and it's evolving quickly, is controlling your home your lights, your t the temperature in your home, and you'll see more and more things in the smart home um, being controlled because we've, not only have we opened up the Alexa skills kit for you to um, automate, uh, to voice enable your apps, we've also published some APIs expressly for thermostat heating and cooling services, lighting and switching services, sprinklers. And, and made it easy. So I, I have a place uh, north of Seattle and I have Nest thermostats, and I've set up groups. It actually auto-discovers the, the smart home devices. And I can say, okay, this one is my living room, this one is my bedroom. I have master bedroom and other bedrooms, and I can group them together and say, these are my bedrooms. So from here, I can say, Alexa, turn the temperature in the bedrooms to 68 degrees. And in Whidbey Island, right now, north of Seattle, my thermostats are going to be set to 68 degrees. And I, again, this whole thing of using voice as an input mechanism in a way to interact took something like configuring smart home thermostats and lighting from a complex thing where you had to pull out either a computer or an app on your phone or your, or your tablet. Um, and it made it simple because you're speaking in your language. You're saying, this is living room, this is bedroom. Right, and I think that that connective tissue in the IoT space is incredibly important because, mm -hmm. like you said, nobody wants to open so many apps on their phone and, yeah. and do this or that. Um, but there's still, you know, there's still multiple commands that you have to give. How far away are we from being able to say, Alexa, I'm home, and she knows that it's 6 p.m. on a Tuesday, uh, and she knows what that means to me and what I need from, from her to do it, to I, control my, uh, my home I devices. think a lot of the hard stuff with voices, um, with, with voice, we, we're, we've worked on it and we've made this very simple and it's not hard to imagine having um, a routine or a profile or whatever you want to call that thing that says Alexa, I'm home or, um, and have it do things. I, you know, I'm, I, I won't talk about our, our personal roadmap at Amazon, but it's, it's not a stretch you to could. imagine. I won't, I had my roadmap in my briefcase yesterday and, um, and then I had his roadmap. She, she didn't have it. She didn't get my roadmap. Obviously. But anyway, um, it is not hard to imagine that happening within uh, the not so distant future. Things like that. Okay. So I'm going to say three months. Three months is probably the near term future. I said the not so distant future. Oh, it's vague. Um, so this was built obviously with the intent to be a speaker. So music makes sense yep. as the most common query. And then I think IoT is also some of the intent behind it. Mm -hmm. What about e-commerce? Because e-commerce e mm. is, is Amazon's bread and butter. Yep. You know? um, how often are you seeing people make purchases through the device? And, and is, was that the, the ultimate intent, the long-term goal for um, purchases? You know, if it were the ultimate intent, we'd probably have launched a different product, I think this is about an open, this is really open. We want people to be able to interact with all uh, technology through Alexa. Uh, people are buying things with their voice every day. Uh, when we launched Echo Dot, we did something that was kind of fun. The only way you could purchase an Echo Dot was to buy it with your voice. So you had to have either have Fire TV, which incidentally we, we launched Alexa on if you have your voice-based remote. So from Fire TV, from Tap, um, or from Echo, you could say, uh, Alexa, order me an Echo Dot. 
And you know, that was just fun to do. Because the dot needs another device, so you're not the limiting dot, your sales. No, the dot doesn't need another device. So you are limiting your sales then. What if I don't have any of those things to purchase my dot with? Uh, uh, that was an intentional, it was just an intentional thing. <laughs> we, wanted to be, we wanted to be fun. And we are, it is selling very, very well. And customers love dot as well. And they're finding other reasons to own dot. When you look at echo versus echo dot versus tap, these just answer different situations in our life. Uh, I, I have told you that in my, in my world, in my home, I have Echo in the living room, I have Echo Dot on my, um, on my uh, bed stand. It's probably the most functional, inexpensive alarm clock, news and information service, audible.com uh, you know, device I can have. Um, right. Um, I did want to talk, because we talked about development, you said the AR thing was not true. I just never heard that before. That's fair. But um, this product was built in Lab 126, right? Yep. And I want to talk a little bit about the cultural differences between, because you know Amazon's not afraid to fail. You guys are very inventive, and you're going to throw you know new weird stuff out. Dash is a great example, and so is this. I think that a lot of people are like, "What is Amazon doing?" And this worked out really well for you. Um, but you know, it, it, there's also a lot of reports and critics say that Amazon is a very hard place to work, and it can be hard on people. So I'm wondering the cultural differences between Lab 126 and being inventive that way and, and kind of exploring new things as opposed to, you know, Amazon's culture. Um, I, can, I can only speak from my personal experience. I've been at Amazon for 18 years. Um, I, I love the culture. I think some of the things that uh, we do, you know, starting from our customer obsession principle and working backward, you know, starting there and working backward, um, and, and all the, the thi our processes, our, the mechanisms we put in place, we try to ensure that we're thinking of customers first. That is no different between uh, Seattle and Lab 126. Um, and I, I, I personally wouldn't have stayed at Amazon for 18 years if I thought the culture was the way you characterized it earlier. I think it's a great culture, personally, for me. Well, critics, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I'm not there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, my last question has a little bit to do with like more long-term thinking. And, Part of it has to do with Google, and that's that Google's search business has been slowly encroached upon by the iPhone with the Safari default browser as well as independent apps. Um, instead of typing in Facebook, you could just go to your Facebook app, and Google loses that interaction. Mm. And I think this is semi-unexpected for Google because this is another, fl it's almost a flank on that attack. Um, they've lost their interaction whether or not the data is coming from Google or not. Uh, do you see Amazon, you know, getting into the search business? This voice-powered assistant is answering a lot of questions for people. I, I don't think search as we use it today is going to go anywhere anytime soon. I think we're still going to use our, our phones and our tablets and our keyboards to search Google and other search engines. I do think um, we're making accessing information material, materially simpler, controlling homes materially simpler. For, you know, if you go on YouTube right now and you search Amazon, Alexa, blah, whatever you want to search for, you're going to see a zillion new inventions of Amazon, you know, the Alexa cloud service doing things. So yeah, I think it's going to dramatically make accessing information simpler. That's something search does. But with search, the way it works today, you know, you search for something and, and you, the human, has to disambiguate the big list that you get back and which is right or wrong. And some of these things are paid for and some are not. Our primary motivation when you ask us a, a question is to make sure that we do a lot of work to figure out what you meant, and then we do the research for you quickly and come back with the one right answer that you were looking for. So um, sir, I don't think search goes away, but I think this, this is going to simplify things quite a bit. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we're out of time. That's I had too bad. a blast, yeah. I feel like we could go on and on, you know? Maybe just chat with Alexa. We could do that. All right. That. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Round of applause for Mr. George. Thank you. My pleasure.